Right, what we're going to do here is we're going to calculate the focal length of a mirror that we're actually grinding. But in order to do that, it's easier to see if I show you one we've already done and actually had luminized. I've got this 8 inch mirror and I want to calculate the focal length of it. You can see that it's actually produced uh, a reflection. But we're going to do exactly the same thing on this mirror. Now this one here I've got wet. I'm going to have to re-wet it when we get done. But when, once I've got this in ground, along the process I want to know what my focal length is. So we're going to show you how to do it with that one and apply exactly the same thing with this one. But I have to show you how it works with this one first. What we've got is we've got a light source that has a standard bulb inside of it. And there's a reason I use a standard bulb to show you in just a second. And I've got a surface that I can reflect an image on. Now when you take a concave mirror like this, it will produce what we call a real image. And real images can be reflected onto other surfaces. So. My setup is quite simple. The light bulb needs to be at exactly the same distance as we have from our sheet that we're going to produce one. That way when I uh, create my image, it's going to be twice the focal length. Now, if you follow me over here to my setup, I've designed a holder. These things are really, really nice. When I do my Ronke test later on to calculate uh, the curvature of that mirror, I want to have this thing for a very similar test that's going on, a simple wooden base set of legs that taper in just a little bit, perpendicular surface here and the taper and the legs hold the mirror very simply like that and it doesn't move. Now when I turn this mirror and I start looking at the light source, you'll notice that it's going to generate an image. Now an interesting thing happens if I get closer to the mirror or closer to the light source you see I just get a big spot and as I walk away from the light source and you can do this freehand, I like to do it on a stand because I'm, I'm going to make a measurement in a minute but the further I get out the more that that focuses that image until now I'm going to go ahead and set it down so that I can actually manipulate it a little better you'll notice I've got a light bulb that starts to show up and as I move it in and out now I see a complete perfect light bulb in as best a focus as I can get a little closer to it so they can see it. You see that image of that light bulb is just all but a perfect light bulb. So now if I were to take my tape measure and if I were to measure from that distance back this way you can see what I'm doing over here on this end that's got a, a distance of about 125 inches 124 inches somewhere in there so I've got about a 62 inch focal length on that mirror. Now the reason I used a perfect mirror is because it's easy to detect the light inside there. Now let's see if that works with a mirror that's not got an aluminized surface on it. If I take this example, that mirror was actually silvered at one time. I used silver on it and, uh, and then I took the silver off so you can still see a little bit of the silver on the back side rather than aluminum coating. I was showing my students when I was building these telescopes before. But if I, if I wet the surface down just a little bit, then I point it at that. You notice that, uh, if I can get it centered here. Where's my image? You notice that it does the same thing. You can now see that white spot. And as I move it back, I, very lightly, but I can see the filament inside there. When I focus on my filament now, half the distance from my uh, piece of paper to my mirror is now the focal point of this one. Now this mirror is significantly shorter in focal length than the other one. So you, if the logic with a perfectly slick surface works the same way, if I wet my mirror that I'm actually grinding on currently. Now this is at the 25 micron stage. I can still go to the 9 micron stage. You'll notice it does the same thing. Now I'm too far out. So as I come back in a little bit more. Now I'm too far in. Now right about there is my focal length. I can measure the distance and I know what length I've got to make my tube from a telescope. I know where I'm going to put my uh, secondary mirror if I shorten that up a few inches to, to make it diagonal. But that's how you calculate the focal length. So it's the distance, if the image is created and the light source is creating it, it's half that distance is the focal length. Now this one's a very, very short one, but the logic 
is sound. I can do the same thing with my 10 inch telescopes that I'm working on and it gives me a way of calculating as I work through these what my focal length is. Appreciate it.